While I was going through all of the Singapore race weekend data, I just stopped and thought about this one question. How is Perez so damn good at street circuits? But then I actually had to stop and think about that. Is he actually good at street circuits? Or is that just one of those things that everybody says like, oh yeah, Perez is a street circuit specialist, but they haven't validated this idea with any data. Lately, all the narratives around Sergio are as he's falling off relative to Max. And honestly, since the summer break, it's actually been a rough time for Perez. That is until Saturday in Singapore. But before we get to Singapore, let's rewind a little bit. If Perez is actually a street circuit demon what makes him so strong on these tracks is it the circuits is it the driver is it the car we're gonna have a look at how Checo has performed relative to max this season and try to answer all these questions i mean it does kind of help that i was a performance engineer for both of these drivers at some point but we can actually draw some pretty meaningful conclusions without me spilling too many of the beans so let's get into the video in order to kick off this whole analysis i just had a quick look at all of the qualifying gaps between verstappen and perez for the dry qualifying sessions up until the italian grand prix the graph here indicates the gaps between the two drivers in qualifying. Here's the zero line. If it's above this line, Perez is ahead. And if it's below, Verstappen's ahead. You can see all the performances here at all the events. You can see that the average gap between Verstappen and Perez is about 0.3% in Verstappen's favor. And if you look at the end of the season towards the break, you can see that at the Belgian, Dutch, and Italian Grand Prix, Max has been putting a pretty large gap into Perez at these circuits. We're going to come back and talk about Zandvoort and Monza here in a second. And if you notice, I've also left off Singapore. But don't worry, we're going to come back and talk about a lot of Singapore in just a minute. But let's get back to the qualifying performances and just start to look at street circuits and see what we can see in the data. So what I've done here is I've separated out the more traditional circuits from the street circuits. Now, if you look back at most of the traditional circuits that we've been to, Verstappen's gap to Perez is actually 0.5%. To put 0.5% of a lap in perspective, that's roughly four tenths of a second on a one minute and 30 lap. If we look at all of the street circuits in isolation, Perez actually has a 0.05% advantage over Verstappen on these circuits. At the beginning of the season in Jeddah, Perez was especially on it here. So if you notice, all these races were kind of at the beginning of the season and throughout the season, the car has evolved and maybe the car has come a little bit more towards Verstappen's preference or maybe Checo has just started to struggle with that car characteristic. But before we actually talk about the car, why don't we talk about street circuits and try to understand what makes them unique and why Perez is so fast here. So what do we mean exactly when we say street circuit? In general, a street circuit is a temporary circuit which uses mostly normal roads in a built-up urban area. These temporary circuits are usually surrounded by barriers which leaves absolutely zero room for mistakes while simultaneously rewarding pushing right up to the limit for the smallest improvement in lap time. Now, as these are normal streets and roads, there are also a lot of different surfaces, which means the grip is changing and inconsistent all over the circuit. If we wanted to understand one single aspect of a street circuit, we could look at the average cornering speeds. Maybe there's something about these low speed corners where Checo just thrives. Take, for example, the classic street circuit of Monaco and then compare that to Zandvoort, a nice, fast, traditional circuit. I mean, if we just look at the tracks, they look completely different. For example, most of the corners are super sharp and close together around Monaco, whereas Zandvoort it's a few tight sections that lead into long, flowing, high-speed sections. But let's actually see what this looks like from a data point of view if we're talking about the corner speeds. So this histogram chart here shows how much time the drivers are actually spending in the various speed ranges around a track. In this analysis, only instances where the driver is not full throttle are considered, so when they're cornering, braking, or when they're doing the traction phase. This actually tells us quite a bit about the circuit and the speed range that is important for performance. So on this chart, you can see roughly how much time they've spent in each of these zones. So we can see that Monaco has actually quite a bit of cornering content down around 60 kilometers an hour, whereas the lowest speed corners around Zandvoort were barely spending any time below 100 kilometers an hour. The dashed vertical lines indicate the average grip limited speed of the circuit. You can see Monaco, 122 kilometers an hour, Netherlands, 164 kilometers an hour. So 40 kilometers an hour higher cornering speed on average between the Netherlands and Monaco. But I don't think we can draw our entire conclusion on just saying slow speed, high speed, whatever. I think we need to look at a little bit more information, but this is an interesting start. I think we might be onto something. I mean, look at Jeddah compared to Monaco. Checo qualified and raced at both of these circuits. Now, Jeddah is actually characterized by high speed flowing corners, medium speed change of direction segments, and there's only really one or two proper low speed corners on the track. It is a street circuit, but the only comparable thing to Monaco is, well, it's mostly on streets and there's only a little bit of runoff as is typical. 
typical of a street circuit. Coincidentally, Jetta is actually more similar to Zandvoort than it is Monaco. Let's have a look. Jetta's average cornering speed is about 160 kilometers an hour. We looked at the track layout, compare that to Monaco. Yeah, there's a couple of corners below 100 kilometers an hour, but it's a street track, but I don't think it's anything like Monaco or some of the other street tracks like Baku. I don't think corner speeds actually really have that much to do with Checo finding more performance in the car. If that was the case, then Jetta should have been a poor circuit for him. I mean, the whole correlation that we talked about at the beginning of the video is, is pretty clear. Normal tracks, variable gap, street circuits, Checo absolutely on Max's pace. But why is this? My next thought was maybe it has something to do with the nature of the corners on these tracks combined with the characteristics of the car, which may suit one driver more than the other at times. And honestly, there's actually been quite a bit of talk in the press about the Red Bull developing the RB18 strictly for Max. I do have my own thoughts on that theory and I'll come back to it in a second. But first, why don't we try to understand a little bit more about the tracks and compare some of Checo's performances to Max and see what it is about these circuits that he seems to love so much. Now, in this instance, I've taken Monaco, Monza, and Belgium as a few to compare. Now, it, Monaco, Perez qualified well and won the race, and in Monza and Belgium, he seemed to struggle quite a bit in qualifying. Now, you can see that Monza and Belgium do have quite a bit of low-speed cornering content, but their average speed is quite high. I mean, Monza's average grip-limited speed is 178 kilometers an hour, which kind of surprised me. Here we have the Monaco Grand Prix qualifying, where Verstappen and Perez actually did quite similar lap times. Now, this is a typical driver overlay. On the top, we've got car speed, here's throttle, here's the DRS, and here's the time delta. When this dashed line goes above the middle, Verstappen's faster. When it goes below the middle, Perez is faster. Over on the left, we have the start of the lap, and on the right, we have the end of the lap. So Verstappen in blue, Perez in red. Now, you can see up here, the lap times, they finish the lap with roughly the same lap time within a couple hundredths of a second. And throughout the lap, they're no further apart than a couple tenths of a second. So gaining time in one place and losing time in the others. Now, let's go through the lap and try to identify where Perez is driving well, because I think Max is a great comparison to have. If I look at quite a few of the braking zones, Checo, in this case, appears to be a little bit slow in and then fast out. He's not lost any time there. Again, Checo's slow in, focusing on the exit of both of these sections again focusing on the exit here out of the tunnel focusing on slowing the car down early and getting a good drive out of that chicane now the idea of slow in and fast out means the driver's giving up lap time on the entry to the corner and focus on positioning the car for the exit now in these kind of circuits with a lot of corners close together having good placement on the corner exit is so critical this ensures the driver's in the right place when positioning the car for the next corner and there's not much time between a lot of these corners this whole segment here with the hairpin is just a rhythm section You've got to hit one apex, onto the next, onto the next. Now, let's look at after the chicane. Checo finds two tenths of a second here, exiting this super fast left-hander. Again, Checo loses just a little bit of time here at the apex of the swimming pool, but overall doesn't lose too much. And at the end of the lap, Max does find a little bit of an advantage over him. Now, as far as the nature of these corners, Checo has done really, really well with this hard straight line braking into a low speed corner and then these low speed change of direction corners. He even performed very well in these high speed, sharp change of direction corners that have virtually zero margin for error. Now, Belgium was the first race after the summer break, and I think this is really what got the Perez critics talking again. Perez's qualifying performance was a long way off of Verstappen and Monza was no better. But let's see what we can figure out from Belgium first. Checo was out qualified by Verstappen here by about eight tenths of a second, which is a huge chunk of lap time. Spa is a really tricky circuit to set up for. I mean, it's got all sorts of different corners. You've got Eau Rouge here, which is flat out, but you've got a lot of very low speed corners well below 100 kilometers an hour. Now, this is actually still a low downforce circuit because you have these very, very long straights. I mean, that's not really a corner in qualifying, so this whole thing is effectively a straight. There, all the way down there, there's a kink, yes, but it's still a long straight. It rewards having a very efficient or low downforce car here. If I tried to understand why Checo's losing lap time relative to Max here, let's have a look at this lap and I'll explain to you what I think Checo is actually struggling with. So immediately upon looking at this, if I look at where he's losing the most lap time, it looks like he's losing out a fair bit in these mediums speed corners here. Um, the low speed corners, not so much here, here. Yeah, the, the, you can see the inflections in the time delta curve. He's losing quite a bit of time there. On this track, the medium and high speed corners actually require a lot of trust in the car because in order to be quick around this track, you have to have quite a bit of front end in the car, which can make it very nervous. Now, by the end of the lap, Verstappen finds a couple more tenths on the brake in the bus stop. I mean, look at this. We're braking from 310 kilometers an hour all the way down to 70 kilometers an hour. This is probably one of the most slowest, painful corners to watch a modern Formula One car navigate on this calendar. It's, it's brutal. Okay, maybe that corner in Miami was a little bit worse, but 
My takeaway from Spa is that Checo does not appear to be too happy in the corners where you're likely to have quite a bit of rear movement in the car. So you don't have much downforce. You've had to put on a lot of front wing in order to get the car to turn in for these places, but the car is also moving quite a bit on the entry to the corners. I think Max usually vibes quite a bit more with this kind of a little bit of movement or floating in the car. And I don't think Checo really likes that at all. And that's a big difference between this circuit and Monaco. Now, it is also possible that Max was more comfortable with the car and he was able to run more front end in the car, which just made him go faster. And I really don't think Checo is a big fan of that style of car. Now, the next circuit is a great example of this, but it may not seem intuitive at first. So let's go back to a track that we've already talked about. Max out qualified Perez by 0.9 seconds, which is a lot around Monza, considering there's only 11 turns on the circuit. Now, the first thing I noticed is that Max is a lot faster in all the straights and Checo's a little bit faster through the corners. So immediately I can tell you Max had less downforce on his car than Checo did at this race. So yes, Checo is slow in a straight line, but he has more grip through the corners. So let's try to dig into that a little bit. One of the things that stands out pretty clear to me, just looking at the zooming in a little bit, Checo gains on the way into the corners and then loses out on the exit. That's that's true. The first chicane, the second chicane, the Lesmos, Ascari in the final corner. That's a characteristic through this whole track. I was expecting if he was running a little bit more downforce, he should actually be finding more time through the corners, not, you know, barely breaking even. Similar to Belgium, I think this is another one of the circuits of Checo trying to find too much lap time on the way into the corners and then losing on the way out because he's over pushed the entry but why does that happen this to me is a good indication that Checo probably wanted to put more front end on the car at the apex of the corner only so why didn't they just add more front wing or a softer front bar or something if i had to guess i would say in the medium and high speed corners around monza that Checo was actually on the edge of entry stability so so adding more front end might have improved the chicanes but it would have made the high speed and medium speed corners on the track more nervous and he would have lost out even more i really don't don't think it's just low speed circuits that favor Checo and I'm not sure that it's just high speed circuits where he's going to struggle either. After we've looked at Monza and Spa it just feels like there's something else and it may not even be related to the circuit but more about the combination of Checo's driving style, the circuit and the car all together. Now I think there's two interesting things that we need to talk about before we look at Checo's killer performance in Singapore. Most of the street circuits that we've looked at were earlier in the season. At the time Max was much more vocal about how he was unhappy with the RB18 and some of the characteristics it had, namely a lack of sharpness and understeer. But that doesn't really seem to be the case now. After looking at Monza and Spa, I think Max excelled here because he did have the front end in the car because he needs that to be very aggressive. But if you want to know more about what Max struggled with the car early in the season, I actually did an entire video on this topic after Monaco where I get into some vehicle dynamics basics and explain how the whole tires and balance works for a car. I'm going to leave the link for this video in the description below. Now, I know you're about to scroll down and click on that, but don't. Check it out after the video. I'll even leave a card that you can click on. But can you do me a favor and click on the like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thanks. What happened? Why does Max now seem happy with the car and why is Checo struggling more? One of the biggest narratives in the press and social media from all of our Twitter experts is that Red Bull is developing a car strictly for Max, which it looks like it might be the case, but honestly, I don't think that it is. It seems to me that Max can pretty much drive anything as long as it's sharp and predictable. Now, at this point, the team are likely just adding overall performance to the car and Max can just take a little bit more instability or front end. I mean, a sharp car is a fast car on Saturday and then you just dial it back on Sunday or wait for Ferrari to f*** up and run away with it. Personally, I would say at this point, Red Bull's strategy should actually be focusing on improving the car for Checo so that he can be closer to Max more often and scoring more points overall throughout the season. But still, after the break, this is what the qualifying performances were looking like for Checo. That is until Singapore. Singapore didn't actually start off that great for Checo. Looking back through the free practice sessions, he was about 1% off for Stappen all the way through FP3. That's about six or seven tenths around Singapore. That is up until qualifying. Qualifying was one of those sessions that started out wet and never really dried up until the very end. Checo kept his nose clean and sticks the car up in P2, just two hundredths of a second behind Leclerc. Now, yes, Max was on an absolute burner his next lap, but he was going to run out of fuel and the team had to abort the lap. But the track was improving in any laps after that time when the Claire and Paris set their laps, they were going to be faster if you could keep it clean. Now, if this detailed data analysis is your thing and you want a little bit more of it, say, for example, you want to see what happened on Max's burner lap in Singapore that he never got to complete. I've got something you're going to love. Every weekend, I spend hours and hours analyzing all the data from practice, qualifying in the race because I'm a geek. Unfortunately, only a very small portion of that analysis that I do ends up in these videos. So I've decided to spend a little bit more time 
and compile these reports from qualifying practice and races just for you guys. Every time a video goes live on YouTube, all of my analysis for that video is actually going on a post. So not only do you get all of these data visualizations, I've also added a lot of my thoughts and commentary and insight into what this data actually means. So this is going on a site called Buy Me A Coffee. It's another way for me to share content with you guys that isn't just YouTube videos. So if this sounds interesting to you, I've left a link to my Buy Me A Coffee page below. Check it out after the video. Speaking of all that cool data analysis, let me show you some of the stuff from the Singapore race and highlight Checo's killer performance while we decide what makes him so good at street circuits. So here's the race gaps plot. This plot just shows you the gaps between drivers on any given lap and you can see safety cars and virtual safety cars here. To make a long story short, Checo has a killer race start while Leclerc wheel spins from P1 back to P2. Checo goes into the lead on the intermediate tires and just stays here. But in a very tricky race, it seemed like nobody actually wanted to finish. Checo manages to defend to Leclerc and keep his cool the entire Grand Prix. I mean, so many people had disaster races with Max and Lewis both making huge mistakes and it cost them quite a bit of points. So let's have a look at how the race unfolded because Checo showed us some of those things which make him just plain awesome at street circuits. I've zoomed into the first stint here and you can see the race gaps between Perez and Leclerc. From the looks of it, Leclerc is holding about a two second gap throughout the entire first stint on the intermediate. So really, I, I think this was probably just Leclerc looking after the tires and waiting for the move onto the dries. Now, the track is slowly, slowly drying, and the drivers are really itching to go onto slicks, but the track is not ready yet. Fortunately for everybody else, Russell plays guinea pig around lap 20 at the VSC. You can see him put on the medium tires here and struggle all the way until about lap 32. Now, if you look at the gaps from here to here, you can actually see that Russell is matching and outpacing the front runners at this point. Everybody in the entire field is still on intermediates and Russell has guinea pigged it out on these mediums. The track is now ready for dry weather tires. The leaders see this and honestly, they're itching for the right moment to pit. That right moment is exactly when Tsunoda sends the car straight into the barriers and causes a safety car. Now Leclerc has a poor stop and Perez maintains the lead. Now we're on the dry tires and this is where Checo really reminds us that he's actually kind of a boss when it comes to street circuits. So here's the final stint of the race and you can see Leclerc's putting some pressure on Perez here all the way up until about lap 47 or so and then he he just fades away. This to me looks like Leclerc has overheated his tires, pushing to try and keep up with Perez and get a shot at overtaking, but it just doesn't happen. It's also insanely slippery off the racing line, so that made it even harder to overtake on an already difficult circuit for overtaking. Now, just as one final comparison, let's have a quick look. Here, we've got Perez's lap time on mediums, and we've got Verstappen on the softs at the end. But remember, Max stopped for mediums initially, then had a huge lockup behind Norris, and then pit for softs. But, I mean, to the end of the race, Perez on mediums is outpacing him quite reasonably. Let's ignore these laps here because this is when Max comes up behind traffic. But up until this point, I mean, Perez's pace on the mediums is very strong and he drove a great race. He made no mistakes and brought it home and got another race win. I think it is pretty clear that Perez has rightfully earned his title as a bit of a street circuit guru. I mean, these numbers don't lie. Most of his outstanding performances this season have been at street circuits. I genuinely do think that Red Bull can continue to add performance to the car while helping to add balance also in specific places that will help Checo improve as well. That being said, if one driver can take more front end and tolerate a more unstable rear of the car, he'll most likely always be quicker over a single lap for sure. So maybe there's something there that Checo's likely focusing on because that isn't something about the car or circuit. That's just how far a driver can extend themselves to the limit. I hope you enjoyed this breakdown video and be sure to check out the data analysis membership at Buy Me A Coffee in the links. And I've also left you that video that I promised earlier on. So I'll see you all after Japan.